Okay. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for showing up. Um, so, my name is Doji, and uh, so this is Sini. Um, we well, I work in uh, I work for Red Hat in the um, platform tool chains group, um, and I mostly work on um, static analysis um, framework um, to uh, perform analysis on binaries um, so that we can analyze ABIs and so on and so forth. So, um, and Sydney, you want to what, what you work on? Hello, good morning everyone. So, I work in Fedora team. Uh, before that, I was uh, involved in Libra Bigel directly, but now I mostly do some Fedora Atomic host and Fedora Cora stuff and uh, also contribute sometime to the Libra Bigel project and uh, AB how we do uh, ABI verification in Fedora. So that's what uh, today's talk is about. And uh, one thing I would like to tell you that uh, Doji has been my mentor for a long time and he helped a lot. So yeah. Okay, let's start. Uh, so today we will be talking about this stuff. Um, so uh, you will see uh, how exactly we are doing ABI, ABI verification in Fedora. How exactly the design looks like, and uh, what all what are the internal tools which we uh, use for the ABI verification, um, in ABI verification and analysis exactly. And then we will look into how we are doing in Bodhi, uh, the gating of. Uh, getting of the packages update uh, during uh, uh, the Bodhi update run and uh, then the future directions. Yeah, so our ABI verification design in Fedora is based on the Taskatron. So how many of you know about the Taskatron? Okay, cool. So if you don't know, a Taskatron is a a framework uh, which helps you to run the automated tests um, and we use it in Fedora to run uh, some tests like uh, RPM lint, uh, this, uh, uh, RPM grill, uh, depth check and also for the ABI checks. Um, so what ex how exactly we do? So uh, whenever you do a package build, so how many of you have done ever package build building in Fedora? Okay, that's cool. <laughs> that's really nice. Yeah. So when whenever you do a package build in Fedora, so not scratch build, uh, it's a non scratch build. So it once it succeeds, uh, we there is a task control task gets triggered. Uh, among them, it's a, a task ABI check. And what exactly it does? Uh, it uh, takes you the package which you just uh, up, um, updated, and uh, and then it takes the last table update updated package available in the Fedora, and then it will perform the ABI comparison uh, between them. And uh, during the ABI comparison, it uh, takes the shared libraries uh, which is available uh, inside the packages and uh, it will do the comparison from the previous uh, version of the package library and from the latest one which you have just uh, uh, made the build. Uh, so once uh, ABI checks runs, uh, you will see the results uh, like uh, failed, passed, or need inspection. Uh, we'll talk more about uh, what exactly, how exactly we categorize this uh, failed, pass, or need is inspection in the later slides. Um, so uh, for now, uh, uh, the package maintainers can get see the what see the the results of this test, how exactly it is uh, like pass failed or or uh, need inspection and the logs of the test results, uh, what failed or uh, what what's there. Uh, so for that, uh, we you really need to go and uh, mm, add yourself to this notification, uh, and you will see get an email. Uh, for that, uh, the package test run, and 
you can check what uh, how to fix it uh, the log contains all the details also uh, if not uh, if you are going to push that update into bodhi uh, the package uh, some set of test runs if you if you recently have done any or maybe in late before that you will see there is a tab inside the update package bodhi updates any package uh, there is a tab called automated test uh, so that's where you will see f uh, ABI check test as well. For instance, uh, we have this link uh, on the down bodhi dot fedora project dot org slash update. Okay. Yeah. You have this. You have a tab here. Yeah. So you have this tab here with which has all the automated tests, um, and and somewhere you can find I don't know the uh, ABI check tests here so it passed so yeah it says that there was no ABI change blah 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 so yeah so it depends uh, how exactly the test ran if the it has some ABI changes it will show it here otherwise uh, you will see no change so that's uh, good uh, um, now uh, we will talk about uh, uh, how exactly the design of the two links look like uh, which we use for actual ABI analysis in uh, uh, analysis using the lib Abigail and I will hand over to Dochi for that. Okay, thank you Sini. Um, so a few years ago when people wanted to know if uh, a library update contains ABI changes, uh, people would would you know, use tools like NM. I don't, I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. Tools to go look inside the ELF binaries and see um, what symbols, ELF symbols, are in there, and and the kind of changes we could see back then were changes like a symbol disappeared. For instance, you had one symbol, which was the symbol corresponding to a function name, and boom, that symbol disappeared. But then, so and that's an ABI change if the symbol was obviously used by some applications. But then we wanted to have more precise uh, information related to the meaning of those symbols, right? Actually, programmers don't even want to talk about symbols. Programmers talk about things like functions, variables, and their types. Symbols, that's too much of, you know, kind of Plum, plumber stuff, right? Um, when you change the type of a parameter of a function as a programmer, and if that impacts the ABI, then you want to have reports in terms of what you changed, like in terms of types, structures, structured data members, and so on and so forth. So to be able to give that kind of information, um, by looking at the binaries themselves, we came up with a framework which name is um, ABI Generic Analysis and Instrumentation Library, ABGL. And so that basically is a library that knows how to, yeah, incidentally, we were two um, starting this project, and ABGL was also the name of the wife of the other guy, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and uh, so it's it just stuck. No, no one came up with a better, better name. So we just kept that one. So that library, which is a C plus plus library today, uh, knows how to load an ELF binary, and of course, it's debug information because we need the debug information to be able to know which kind of things we're looking at inside the binary. Debug information will tell us that, oh, from here to here, what you're looking at, a variable. That variable is, uh, has a type. The type is a structure, blah, blah, blah. So we need to analyze debug info just like any debugger or, I don't know, things like Valgrind or, and so on and so forth would do. So we load that. And what do we do with that? We build an internal representation of the exported interface, right? Just, yeah, just like what a compiler would do. Um, but the compiler will do that from source code, and we do that from the binary. So we build the internal representation, which is a graph, basically, and some nodes of the graphs are types, 
and uh, interfaces. Interfaces meaning either public functions, like exported functions that are not static, for instance, in C, or global variables, you know, things that applications can use, you know, from the binary. So we build an internal representation of that. And then the library also has facilities to compare two graphs to internal representation. Um, and then once we've compared that, I mean, like think about it as what uh, GNU diff does, right? On text files. But one of the big differences of what we do compared to GNU diff is that once we have uh, the result of the comparison, we just don't spit it out. We also build an internal representation of the changes as well. You know, not every single change needs to be like emitted, reported as is. Um, let me give you an example. You have, for instance, I don't know, two functions. Um, the first one, his name is Foo. Let's say, yeah. All the functions are named Foo, someone. And the other one is, ah, you know my example, right? Uh, bar. So, and the two functions have, uh, take a parameter, which is, I don't know, in C, a pointer to a structure, for instance. I don't know. Uh, the structure's name is S. And suppose that we run an ABI comparison between the two versions. So this is a super fancy library we have, right? And we come up with a new version of it, and we modify S, the tr structure S. So suppose that the report says that, OK, in function foo, we have an, uh, a change. And that change is, well, it's S that changed, basically. And because of that, it in did impact foo, right? Do you want to know by default, for instance, that bar has also an ABI change, and that change is due to S? You can say yes, but usually most developers <laughs> who came up with uh, ABI, uh, ABI div result at the beginning told me, ah, this is noise. You told me about the change of S on foo. I don't want to see the change of S on bar either, um, you know, like by default. The second one is redundant, okay? So whenever, whenever we have the internal representation of the ABI change, what we do is that we analyze that as well, and then we will flag stuff, like redundant stuff, or, or you know, changes that are not meaningful. For instance, uh, let me give you an, another example. If you're uh, analyzing a C++ library, for instance, and you change some data members, uh, moves from being public to private, I don't know, or the other way around, okay? This is a change, and we see that in the debug info, and we detect that. But is that really an ABI change that is meaningful at first sight? It doesn't really you know, break things, basically. Some programmers would want to see it, right? So we will put that in another category, which is a category uh, you know, which says, OK, it's a change, but not very important. So we do all these things on the graph of ABI changes as well. So this is where we're different from something like GNU diff. You know? We also work on the changes. And at this point, we give a chance to uh, users to, s to, to say what they want to see as changes and what they don't want to see. Um, for instance, uh, you can have a second function, a uh, third function named Baz. I don't know, so foo, bar, and the third one is Baz always. And for a reason, Baz is exported, you know, as an elf artifact. But programming model in your project, Baz is private to you. It's only used, it's only meant to be used by other libraries that are part of your project. It is, so Baz is public um, from an ELF perspective, but exactly. You don't put um, um, Baz in header files, for instance. Uh, so you, want to s you don't want to see changes on Baz, even though it's public. Yeah, programmers are weird sometimes. Um, so for that, you can write what the Valgrand uh, people called a suppression file, right? Saying, OK, this function, I don't want to see any changes uh, related to it. We call that suppressions. And so suppressions will be taken into account when we are analyzing the graph 
of ABI changes. Okay, so th this will be at that point, basically. And then we have passes. It's basically a compiler stuff. We have other passes that will walk through this graph of changes and will report those changes. Okay, so do you see the pipeline a little bit? So this is what we do. Sometimes it can take a lot of space and time. Uh, because if you look at it uh, from a toolchain perspective, what we do here is just like what linkers do. Okay, we look at the, the, the library, the .so file, and from the .so file, we, we, we break it apart and we look at every single translation unit. You, you get that translation unit? That made up this .so file. And from those translation units, we build a common model, right? So just like what linkers do, uh, linkers do except that linkers <laughs> don't look at types, right? They just look at reloc relocations, symbols, and so on and so forth. When you start looking at types, things can become really messy, you know, and super big, okay? So that's the main difference uh, between us and linkers, but, you know, there are similarities. So, based on that library, we came up uh, with uh, different tools uh, directed by the feedback we got from you guys, from users. So, we came up with a tool named ABI Package Diff, which takes two RPMs today. Someone added uh, Debian support, so it works on Debian packages as well, anyway. <coughs> and, uh, for those RPMs, we will look at, you know, uh, the binaries or only the shared libraries. It, it depends. It, it can look at both uh, that are in those RPMs, and we will perform comparisons, ABI comparisons on, on, on them. Of course, for that, we also need the debug info RPMs, okay? And these are, these, so it looks, um, things always look simple when you put them on, on slides. Um, but think about it a bit. The debug info is usually stripped when we use our, you know, RPM uh, pipeline. The debug info is stripped out, so we, that's one thing, and secondly, it is compressed. You know that, right? We use a compression scheme um, carried by a tool which name is DWZ. So it's an ad hoc compression uh, scheme that we use. I say we, I mean the tool chain people. So what Libabigel does here is that it also has to decompress um, this debug info. So debug info that will take, I don't know, like one gigabyte of space decompressed can take, right? So decompressing that has, you know, bring challenges because we have to, you know, uh, try to reduce the memory consumption, you know, to not make things explode, but there are interesting things there. So we do that, bug info, and then we also take uh, the devel RPM packages into account, because remember, we were saying that you can have some um, exported functions or global variables that are not meant to be like consumed by applications. They are meant for internal purpose purposes. But how do you know that these are internal stuff and not public APIs? What we do is that we look at the um, header files, okay? And we try to be maybe too smart for our own sake. Um, because one of the main purpose of one we're, what we are doing here is that we don't want to look at the source code. We really don't want to do that. We want to look only at the binary files. Do you get why? Okay, the reason is that, no, but, I mean, there, uh, there are some profound implications to that. Because today, when you look at the source code, you cannot know what the binary form is going to be. Because in C and C++, we are subject to the tyranny of the preprocessor, which means that there are stuff missing from the source code. You know, uh, there is information missing, meaning, for instance, the value of the defined, you know, of macros. You don't have that when you look at the source code. So you have to know the build system 
stuff. So when once you start uh, willing to parse source code, you get into a rabbit hole uh, because you need to be able to parse the build system. And we have O2 tools, we have Mason, we have, you know, it's super messy, the world of build systems. So we just want to look at uh, the binaries, right? And then, well, then you have <laughs> the binary form, okay? But then now we want to look at header files to know what <laughs> um, the public interfaces are. So what we do is that we are going to, w when we analyze the binaries, we look at an interface and in the debug info, there is information in there saying where, in which file, this interface has been declared or defined. I'll repeat that. When you have a structure that is defined in a header file, uh, a foo.h file, that information is present in the debug info. So you see that struct s is defined in foo.h, okay? And then what we're going to do is that we're going to go get, uh, see if we have foo.h in the header files in the devel RPM. If we do, then foo.h is part of, you know, uh, the public interface uh, defining header files. So we know that S is part of the public interface. That's how we do it, you know, without having to parse um, the header files. So we need the devel RPMs. So once we have that, we will auto-generate some suppression uh, specifications, saying that whatever is not in foo.h, we don't want to see its reports. So this is how we integrate all this in the pipeline, okay? to reduce, of course, um, um, noise in the uh, final reports. Then people were not happy enough. They wanted to do weird stuff, programmers again. So we came up with a tool which name is ABIDW. What does it do? It emits a textual representation of the ABI of a binary. So suppose you have a binary, you want to know what is that the ABI of that binary and you want to save that ABI into Git without having to save the binary into Git, right? Because nobody wants to save binaries into Git or something. So ABI DW just spits out an XML file, we, uh, file we, we call that in a format that we call ABI XML. So you can just take that boom and stick that into, into Git. And then afterwards, there is another tool which name is ABI diff, which can take an ABI XML file and a binary. So you will compare the ABI of the binary against the ABI of the ABI XML file, which is the base, a baseline ABI, for instance, for you. And that is useful for people to build ad hoc ABI checking stuff during the, you know, that they can run during the build system. Th there are some upstream project today that have a make check ABI, like target, that is run regularly and so they do this they use this kind of stuff okay so many people do have you know different uh, use cases in mind depending on their project and if we don't have the tool for that I mean it's okay to come to us and say you know what if you guys could come up with this kind of tool and we will you know try to write it uh, if possible and if the libabigail library doesn't have um, the features needed for that tool well we'll just add it because you know we don't know all the use cases by you know in advance, and uh, there is also Fed ABI package diff, uh, which is intended for Fedora specifically. As you as you can imagine here, using ABI package diff can be tedious. You have to get the, the two RPMs you you want to compare. You have to get the debug info RPMs. You have, you have to get the devel RP, You know, and uh, at some point you just get fed up, uh, fed up. So we said, rather than being fed up, use fed ABI package diff. And um, yeah, I do my best for jokes anyway. So um, this one is quite cool. Um, even though it's written in Python, nobody's perfect. I didn't write that. But anyway, apparently uh, uh, writing it in, in Python was mandatory so that we could use the Koji uh, interface or something. There's, there are always bad reasons to use Python. Anyway, so 
but it's a cool tool. Uh, seriously, I, I like it. I like it a lot because you just say Fed ABI package div. You give the name of a package like um, no Fed ABI package div. You say from Fedora 27, for instance, and the name of uh, the package you've just built, right? The RPM you just like HTTP something dot RPM, and so. Fed ABI package if is going to compare the ABI of the HTTP package you just built against the stable one from Fedora 28. You don't even know the version. You don't even know where it is. Just go grabs it. Even if you can do s some nice stuff in Python, apparently. Anyway, and um, and it works. So this is typically one of these things that we didn't think about in the beginning, and Fedora users, you know, like uh, made us uh, right. And we have other tools uh, as well, but I won't bother you guys too much with, with those for now. So, of course, today, Task ABI Check, so the uh, ABI verifier of Fedora, uses ABI package diff. As a matter of fact, it was because of ABI uh, Check that Cine uh, wrote ABI package diff to begin with. So, always this, you know, um, user ca uh, use case driven approach that we have. We don't do intelligent design that much. You know, we, we just we grow like a cancer or something. Anyway, <laughs> so <laughs> um, so what what we do is that uh, you want to talk about this one or I yeah okay um, we just compare. So the new package against the old one, like as as you guys know, and um, because this task ABI check uses, uh, sorry, uses the Taskotron infrastructure, there are some lot of nice magic in there to get, um, you know, the debug info packages, the devel packages. I call that all the ancillary packages needed to do to perform the uh, the comparison, and it's all magic. Boom, uh, Taskotron give uh, infrastructure gives us everything and we can uh, perform the comparison without Taskotron knowing exactly you know what's happening um, and uh, so yeah it's 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 kind of you know well integrated and I at the for instance just to give you an example at the beginning we wanted well I wanted I like multi-threaded stuff I like doing stuff in parallel and we were talking I think it was with you uh, Camille, uh, Camille with uh, about you know like Taskotron is it you know, like multi-threaded, blah blah blah, and and well, just because we could write ABI package diff, you know, underneath, we put all the uh, multitasking, you know, parallel handling in ABI package diff. That's Taskotron just calls it, and we perform, you know, like if I don't know if your lab, your RPM has like uh, five libraries, and you have at least five cores. Right on the machine, then the five comparisons are going to happen in parallel. You know this kind of stuff. So uh, it's pretty pretty neat. Um, so as you know, we get the public interfaces from uh, the Devel um, package, and we provide you know uh, suppression automatically based on based on that. Now, so as a result of this. You have to know that, I mean, ABI comparison is a gray area kind of thing. We cannot say, oh, you know, you can, we cannot always say if a change, an ABI change is good or bad, basically. It depends. There are some that are, you know, bad. Like, I don't know, a function disappearing, a public function that is in the interface that disappears, um, a type. I mean, like for instance, a return type of a function that changes uh, completely, we flag that as not good. Um, but there are other changes that are weird. So the first kind of change, when we know for sure that they are not good, your test failed. Yeah, it failed. Sorry, the the, the status of the uh, test is failed. But then suppose you have a you have a structure. I don't know, which gets changed. Like you remove a data member from it and you add a new data member for to to it, right? Um, and the size of the st structure doesn't change. Is that good or bad? Hard to say. So we flag it, we detect it, and we say that this kind of change it needs it needs inspection. So these are the kind of gray, kind of 
things. Um, and, um, and then there is something I wanted to say here is that if you keep seeing these kind of changes consistently for your project, you know, and in your opinion, there are better ways to categorize these things, come to us and even for your project, we can figure out a way for these needs inspection kind of uh, changes to become like either failed or passed. Is that clear what I'm saying? Um, we, yeah, because yeah, we need to evolve uh, that way, you know, um, based on your feedback. So don't just say, ah, the tool said this, ah, this. Uh, okay, I'm not gonna use any F words uh, here, but okay, this tool, yeah, uh, no. Yeah, Fedora, yeah, yeah, of course. This Fedora tool, uh, yeah, thank you. Um, no, seriously, come to us and we'll try to figure out something. This is how we grow and, and, and get better. All these static analysis uh, tools need to you know, uh, grow like this with uh, input from, from users. S so this brings us to the Bodhi update um, getting project. So as you guys know, at some point, um, well, I mean, even uh, well, at some point, people wanted to use more automated tests way to uh, gate um, package updates through body. And uh, well, we started, you know, um, enabling ABI verification in that framework. I mean, using test ABI check as a gating, asked, right? Yeah, so, uh, and we have pretty interesting results. Thanks, Ochi. Uh, yeah, so we already have uh, the test running in both the updates uh, we saw in the web interface before. Uh, so uh, this, uh, with the current approach, what happens that a uh, uh, package manager, ca package maintainer can go and see in the both the test results uh, whether ABI check has passed or not, or he can uh, 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 he can go and uh, see in the email notification that uh, the test has passed or failed. Uh, but there is no way that we are saying that okay, go and fix it. Uh, maybe maintainer can go and just ignore it, and uh, uh, we might have seen a lot of uh, some of at least uh, uh, email threats on Fedora devil that this package has been updated and there was ABI change and it has not been announced and uh, that leads to a lot of uh, package being failed. So the, we tried to do uh, in Fedora to get the uh, get uh, the Bodhi uh, package updates using the uh, using the ABI check as well. So in uh, January end, I think the we in a, we started the getting the. Uh, getting the uh, package updates uh, uh, with some other test, uh, there was uh, the ABI check as well. And uh, in this, uh, what we do is that uh, whenever uh, a package is pushed and uh, uh, the updates is available in Bodhi, uh, if there is a failure, then uh, it will stop it from being uh, uh, being pushed uh, default, uh, it needs to be inspected by the maintainer, he needs to fix it or uh, he can go and wave it, that was the approach, but it didn't work out and uh, uh, it just failed. Uh, the reason, uh, we'll look at it. Uh, so basically what happened that uh, we got very quickly some feedback that uh, the tests uh, which are running ABI check is uh, getting them. It's like there was lots of false positive uh, uh, results coming up and uh, they cannot really push the uh, updates available. Uh, and then um, uh, the reason was, uh, we look, yeah. So what happens that uh, in the shared library, um, we we do ABI comparison for all the shared library available in the package and uh, the the issue which we faced was uh, there were a lot of uh, 
libraries which were considered as private libraries as per the maintainers. Uh, for example, if you go to the LibreOffice uh, package or anything, there are uh, uh, some shared library which is supposed to be used for the internal purpose. Uh, the private libraries is like, yeah, it is being used for just inside the project and it is not supposed to be used by the other uh, other in the other applications um, uh, so these changes were really not uh, uh, supposed to be get, get, uh, getting the package uh, from being pushed to the stable um, so uh, what we did was uh, we we stopped the gating based on ABI check as soon as possible and then uh, we started looking into how to fix that. So we, uh, there were really no way in the ELF binary, ELF binary to say that this is a private shared library or a public shared library. All are like just a shared library. So we came up with an approach after some discussion uh, that um, if a RPM package says that uh, we provide these uh, SOs, uh, so we consider only those as the uh, public shared library and rest of the library would be the private shared library which is supposed to be used only inside the application. Um, and uh, got implemented in s into the uh, into the lib Abigail itself, uh, ABI PKG diff to lib. And, uh, the another was, uh, it was a minor stuff, uh, which I think we missed out or we came to know about while doing these fixes. So we were, uh, so suppose if you have a RPM package update and there are a lot, there are some, some pack, sub packages, so if you don't ship devil or header packages into that, which means that uh, we should assume we don't really want to use your application as a, to be consumed by another packages. So if uh, you do, you're not shipping any devil package, uh, we are considering it as a private. Uh, uh, any, sh any shared library is shared as a private. Uh, we do not consider it as a being used consumed. So that we implemented inside the task ABI check itself. And these are the two things uh, we did. And libabigail 1.4. Uh, which uh, we recently, which was recently released, uh, contained the fixes of the first issue, and uh, it's now again ready because uh, these were the main issue which we saw so far. So maybe we can enable again the uh, gating of the body uh, upon the task ABI check. Uh, so initially, it was uh, I think enabled for all the packages, but maybe this time we can start with. Uh, getting some of the packages or opt-in basis like some maintainers who wants to opt it they can they can opt in and see how it goes so yeah it's just open to suggestions what we should be doing um, there's one more stuff uh, like uh, if you are really not satisfied with the uh, current uh, current uh, separation which we do like uh, not considering the sh uh, private libraries and uh, if you still wants to s suppress some of the uh, some of the um, uh, libraries or or any inside symbols as a considered to be private you can write your own abi specification uh, there is a, you can have ship a dot abi ignore file inside your package and uh, you can ship it and the lib abigail and the two links on top of it will take care of it and uh, it will not show you as a uh, any abi changes as a false positive um so that's all and uh, we'll look into the future directions. Yeah, future directions. Um, so first of all, um, before even getting into the specifics of what we want to do in the future and so on and so forth, I wanted to say again that um, it's, it's, do not, please do not be shy. I mean, come to us. Um, there are many things that are project dependent. For instance, so Matthias is here. Um, in uh, GTK and G object based uh, project in general, there is something that's been uh, in the back of my mind for some time that we need to do and we haven't, you know, done yet, which is that, okay, you know, by default today, we only look at uh, 
interfaces that are public, you know, not static. And we, we get the types that we look at from those interfaces. These are the root of the graph that we built. But then in GTK and GObject stuff, you have some static functions. So they're static. They're not seen outside the binary. For instance, the class stuff, you know, that are that we should look at because these things define um, some of the types that are used in, in you know in the GTK application and so on and so forth. But but because the functions that use these types are static, we don't see those. So you, you, someone can break these things, um, you know, th these v functions that they end up like v functions in in the in the class uh, uh, structures. So. So I think we can do something like uh, you know detecting that we're looking at a G object thing and look at those uh, static functions as well rather than just ignoring them. We, we can do that, but it's project specific and we have to you know like yeah define how how to how to do that. Um, so yeah, I, I, it's 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 important that we get to have these discussions even even if you know we're like bandwidth stripped. We can still design what we want to do, and then when I have the bandwidth, I'll you know work on that. So please get you know come to us, and so so we can do stuff for your uh, for your project. We even supported Ada recently. Like if we do that, we can do many stuff, right? There are some people like who want us to support Fortran. <sighs> yeah. Um, anyway, so yeah, we can do a lot of stuff. So first of all. I think w one of the first thing that people are being, uh, you know, are, are asking for is speed improvement. We get this like all the time, but it's never enough. Like for instance, if you want to analyze Firefox, ha, uh, you know, okay. So basically, what I'm, what I think I would like to look into now is doing things more in parallel. It looks like, well, at a deeper level. So I told you that we're building uh, an internal representation, OK? But we're loading two binaries, usually, because we, we, we are comparing stuff, right? We're loading two binaries, but at some point, we are building just one graph, even though we have two binaries. Because th there are two graphs, but we try to share many things. So if, for instance, we're lo loading the first binary, okay, we load the fir we did load the first binary. We're loading the second one, and we see a type which name is int integer. We've seen int in the first binary too, right? But this time, the two ints are the same. What do we do? I don't build. I won't build another int. You know that is memory waste. So I will reuse the first int. You know. So the, even though the two graphs are different, they reuse. There are some nodes that are.